This is a house of worship. This is a house of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your name. This is a house of healing. And our hearts are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. There's resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over. Jesus, this is a house of miracles. And we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. There's resurrection power. Power's running through my veins. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over the coldest grave, even the coldest grave. So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. I still believe you're moving. I still believe you're speaking. God, I believe you're working. All things for good. I fix my eyes on heaven. God, I receive your vision. Oh. Believe you're working all things for good. I 
this house he's still a God who outpours miracles he's still a God that heals he's still a God who sets free he's still a God who makes a way when there seems to be no way he's still a God of miracles Jesus we're so thankful God that you're here thankful Jesus amen I don't know about you but it feels absolutely wonderful in the house of God tonight why don't we take another 10 seconds and just clap our hands, lift our voices, lift him up and magnify him. Come on, I believe we're loosing something in the atmosphere right now. I believe something's beginning to flow right now because of our praise and worship. When we lift him up, things are going to flow down. When we lift him up, healing's going to come down. Amen. It is... Again, so wonderful to be in an atmosphere like this. I know we've got prayer for needs. Some of these needs need miracles. Anybody ever seen a miracle? I, I, I've, I, I've heard it said to my face, well, Ryan, I, I don't believe that miracles are for us anymore. That it was just for the apostles. It was just for biblical times. But I can tell you one of the miracles that I've seen, and it stuck out to me for all of my life ever since I've seen it. I've watched a woman come into this very sanctuary, walking with a cane, could barely walk. People began to pray for her. And before you knew it, she dropped the cane and took off running around the sanctuary. Our God can still heal. Our God can still heal. We want to... Not only remember the service tonight and let God have his way, but we also want to keep remembering Sister Alyssa, Brother Matt right now. Uh, they're trying to get her admitted to the hospital, so hopefully the new baby rider will be here soon. Also, we need to remember Sister Wallace, who is not feeling well tonight. We need to remember our life recovery program. It's Things that are going wonderful in life recovery. Uh, there were five here, including a backslider on Tuesday night, and we're excited to see what God's going to flow through each and every single one of them. Need to remember Train Up Learning Center and all the families connected to that. It is, again, so much more than a daycare. It's, it's not just babysitting. It is a ministry. Need to keep remembering Maria while she's out of town. We do miss her. We understand she's working on the West Coast, but we do miss her when she is not able to be here. Need to remember our city, our great nation, Bishop and Sister White and Pastor and First Lady Lambert. And we also need to remember 
continued unity, and continued revival. If you have a need, why don't you make it known by the lifting of just one hand? Just one hand. It can be multiple needs, but just make it known by one hand. And if you believe God is still a God who can outpour a miracle in that situation, why don't you lift your other hand right now? And let's lift up our voices and begin to cry out to him, begin to pray to him over these needs and the needs that you have. God, we're so thankful, Jesus. Thankful, God, to be in the house of you tonight. Thankful, God, for what you're going to do. We know that we have stepped into a divine service, a divine moment this night. God, we ask that you would outpour in this service unlike ever before. Outpour upon each and every single need, God, that we've mentioned. Each and every single need that was represented by the lifting of hands, God. We know that you are the God who outpours virtue. You're the God who outpours healing. You're the God who outpours wholeness, Jesus. And we know that you are going to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think, God. And right now we clap our hands in thanksgiving, God, of what you're going to do. God, we clap our hands more, God, but just because of who you are. We lift up our voices and cry hallelujah to you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And right now we've got a baptism. We love and appreciate Meredith and her family so much, and we're excited to have them here with us tonight. And we want to, is she ready, Brother Jesse? Is she ready to come in? Well, you can go ahead and get her in there if you don't mind. We're going to stretch our hands, and we're going to pray for Meredith right now. So why don't we stretch our hands and let's pray for Meredith. God, again, we're so thankful for all that you've outpoured. So thankful, God, for all that you're doing for Meredith and her family, God. Thankful for your blessings that's outpouring. Thankful, God, for how you're going to use her in the kingdom of God, for how you're using her to be a soul winner, God, a revivalist in this day and age, Jesus. We're so thankful, God. We ask that you would put a hedge of protection about her through all, all of her life, God. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones, and I tried with all my mind, and I just can't win the fight, I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know. And he told me that I was not alone. Picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior. cannot deny what I see Got no choice but to believe My doubts are burning Like the ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can just keep them moving No, you ain't welcome here from now till I walk the streets go, I'll sing of how you save my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he 
Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Hallelujah, gave me a reason to dance. 
go get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. to take up the offering, but I just want to tell you, sometimes people ask my opinion about stuff. Baby girls are better than baby boys. I'm sorry, gentlemen. That's just the way it is. I might be biased, but it's true. Which cruise line should you take? Carnival, because I own stock. And what should I do with 30 seconds? I should praise God, because you might be an old man one day. You might be like me one day where your knees are give out, you can't jump, but if you will have the opportunity, I'd take it right now. If your voice is still good, I'd send it up unto Jesus. If you can lift up a praise, right now seems like a good time to do it. What should I do with the time I have? I should spend it in praise and honor and glory unto the King that called me out, that gave me life, that took me out of darkness, set me up on the rock that I might walk in light. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I, I remember the days when church was a workout for me. My abs would be burning. My calves would be tight. Amen. Now I just lose my voice sometime, and that's okay. We do what we can, right, Brother Chuck? What the Lord gives us ability to, that's, that's what we do. If I get some ushers, please. And I think that's what we do sometimes. You know, I've been there. I've been there without two quarters to rub together to my name. But the Lord is faithful, amen. The Lord is faithful. And if we'll be faithful, he'll be faithful back to us. Pray with me, please. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. Thank you for all that you do for us. And pray right now that you would bless this offering. Bless it, my God, to build your kingdom. Bless it, my God, to bring in lost sheep. Bless it, my God, to bring forth this gospel into this tri-state area. We ask it in Jesus' name. If you got tithes and offering, bring them in and worship with the praise team. In the shaking, we are here, God. We are praying. Make us fearless in these last days. We'll see victory for your name's sake. So silence the roar. We 
would be a roar of praise that would rise out of the sanctuary tonight. Oh, come on, lift your voice and magnify him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You'll have to pardon our noise. It's the sound of victory. You'll have to pardon our noise. It's the sound of healing. 
you'll have to pardon our noise. When the Son is set free, it's free indeed. He brought us out of darkness in a marvelous light. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless you. And you're thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. I'll be very honest with you. I had a brand new message. I felt I was going to preach at some point in time. And the Lord said, no, you're going to tag on to what you preached this morning. I just asked tonight, is there anybody that was healed in the service this morning? I need to see your hand real quickly. We've got one, two, three, four, four, five, six. Wonderful, wonderful. Seven. I think we ought to give God praise for a moment right now. Amen. We don't need to take lightly the moving of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Have you feel that level of expectancy in the atmosphere tonight? That didn't get here by accident. That didn't hear by happen chance. The group of people for now some 16 days, I think it is, that have been praying round the clock, seeking the Lord for moving the Holy Ghost in this house. Because we know that God is in the working business right now. Amen. He's in the healing business. He's in the delivering business. We're just cultivating an atmosphere for God to do those very things. And I am very thankful for each and every one of you. One more time, would you lift your hands and love the Lord together across this house right now? Why I feel a shift in the Holy Ghost right now, but I do. Ask Sister Leanne to come back. There's a song that I feel in the spirit tonight. Whether you recognize it or not, he's in the room tonight. Amen. I watched God do some miraculous things this morning. Work in some very powerful ways. But that was this morning. We're in a whole new service with a whole new opportunity for God to do anything in this house tonight. So I'd ask you right now, is there anybody in this house that needs God to do things that you can't? Lift your hands right now across the house. Wow. Look around you right now. This is not difficulties. This is opportunities for a God move in this house on this Sunday night. Hallelujah. Would you lift your hands right now and talk to God across this house and tell God to do whatever you need to do in this room, Lord. Come on, I need you to pray fervently. We've shouted, we worshiped. It'd be a great opportunity for you to open your heart and say, God, flow like you want to. Let our praise be empty space. Come by in this place. Every heart you are transforming. Come and have your glory. Darkness trembles, mountains crumble when you draw. Draw near to us, strongholds breaking, destinies changing. When you draw near to us, you draw near to us. Oh, Every life can be real. 
It's appropriate, pray for somebody close to you right now. You may have to move across the aisle. You may have to change a couple of rows. Why don't we let the body be the body for a moment? Let the blood flow. Let healing flow. Ministry of the body take place tonight, God, I pray. Yes, God. Go, oh, God. Every need represented in this house. You know every heart, God. Come on, guys. That's it. You draw near to us. Strongholds breaking. Destiny. Darkness trembles. Oh, hallelujah. Trembles. Yes, God. When you draw near to us. When you, when you draw, draw near, near to us. us. Strongholds breaking. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. changing. When you draw near to us. You draw what? near to us. While the music plays, would you lift your hand and lift your voice and ask God to flow like he wants to. Flow like you want to, God. Flow like you want to, God. Flow like you want to, God. This vessel is available, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Draw near to us. 
Would you take a moment, clap your hands, and love the Lord together tonight? can be seated. Those that are praying, pray as long as you want to. It will not interfere whatsoever. I really like to preach what the Lord wants me to. Matter of fact, I like preaching new stuff. But I like following the Holy Ghost more than I like preaching new stuff. Amen. Again, the Lord carried my heart back to something that I mentioned this morning. Something specific. Some of you may have been out of, had to be in a class or whatever. So I'll just reiterate it again. This afternoon, the Lord said specifically that we have allowed limits. Somebody say limits. Limits of the world to creep into the church. Ideas that we, oh, hallelujah, yeah. We want to be like everybody else. You know, Israel had that idea. We want a king. We want to be like everybody else. We want to have the same rituals and routines we want to send somebody out and say, hey, this is our king. But you see, the problem was the Lord wanted to be the only king. He wanted to be the only voice that would speak into their world, but they said, we want to be like everybody else. Let me tell you something, the church of the living God is like nothing else. It don't operate like everything else does. This is not Walmart. This is not JCPenney. This is not uh, some industry. This is not Toyota. This is the church of the living God. Oh, those are fine. Those that work there, so on. That, that's all fine and good. But this is not those places. This is the church of the living God. It operates like no other. There is one voice, and that is the Lord God. And when he begins to speak, I want to take note what is pleasing in your sight, God. Is there a problem because I don't want to offend? I don't want to put nothing in the way that would hinder a move of the Holy Ghost because when I do, that means we walk in here with dead church and we walk in here with dead religion and people walk out of here with dead experiences. Uh, I'm here to tell you we're too close to eternity to be satisfied uh, with dead church, dead religion, and dead experiences. Uh, if there's something that's in the way, uh, I want God to highlight it. Uh, why? Because I don't want to be a hindrance to the flow of the living God. If God wants to speak, I want God to speak. If God wants to move, I want God to move. I don't want anything to hinder. Second thing. God said revival will cost you. Somebody say it out loud. Revival will cost you. Specifically, the Lord sent me to the Scripture where pestilence had broken out. The death angel was destroying. But it stopped at Ornan's floor. David saw the angel stop at the threshing floor of Ornan. David runs to Ornan. He said, I want to sacrifice here because here is the place that I want to start recovery, restoration. David said, I want to buy this place because I want to build an altar here because this is the place that destruction stopped and healing started taking place. May I tell you, there's been enough destruction. There's been enough pestilence. There's been enough 
issues going on. There's been enough death and all this business going on. There's been enough sickness and all that kind of stuff. But I've come to tell you tonight, uh, it all needs to stop here. And if it's going to stop here, somebody's got to make your mind up. We got to build an altar here. We can't wait down the road somewhere. and We can't make another decision about another day. Uh, if healing is going to start here, if restoration is going to start here, somebody's got to make their mind up. Uh, I'm willing to to pay some things. Uh, I'm willing to buy some things. Uh, I'm willing to make a sacrifice. Uh, I'm willing to build an altar. And I'm telling you, there have been folks uh, for the last 16 days uh, around the clock uh, that have been coming to this house uh, and saying, God, uh, I'm willing to sacrifice. Uh, I'm willing to sacrifice my time. Uh, I'm willing to build an altar in my world. Ornette said to David, it's yours. Take it. If you want threshing items, if you want cattle, whatever you want, it's yours. David said, no, I can't do that. Because David understood that revival will cost you. David said a very important phrase that I think we need to understand tonight. David said, I will not offer that which cost me nothing. Some of us come to the house of the Lord. And what we feel in this house has not cost us one thing. We're walking in the prayers of elders that have gone on before us. Individuals who poured out without measure, individuals who sacrificed, it said there is a generation that's coming. And I have to die in the process. I'm willing to sacrifice. And some of us are in this very auditorium feeling the flow of the Holy Ghost on the sacrifice of others. And it has not cost us one thing. But I'll tell you in the Holy Ghost tonight, if we're going to move into another dimension, we got to make up our mind here and now. If it costs me, I'm still going. If I've got to build an altar, I'm still going. Uh, if it's going to cost me sacrifice, I'm still going. Uh, if I have to sacrifice my time, uh, if I have to sacrifice my energy, uh, if I have to pour out uh, without measure, uh, bless your heart. Uh, I want to tell you tonight, uh, I want to step into the prophetic and tell this church, uh, restoration uh, depends on a cost. Uh, and a cost is up to us. Uh, are we willing to pay the price? Can't depend on Brother Scroggins' altar. Yeah. I can't depend on Brother Valentine's altar. I can't depend on Brother Lambert's altar. If restoration is going to start in my family, if it's going to start in my kids, I got to be willing to say, God, I'm willing to buy it if I have to sell everything because I take the limits off of the sacrifice. I take the limits off of the offering. I take the limits off of whatever God requires because my kids are more important than my stuff. I said my kids uh, are more important uh, than my stuff. Uh, my family is more important uh, than my stuff. Uh, my marriage uh, is more important uh, than my stuff. Uh, and if I have to buy uh, a threshing floor, uh, if I have to pay everything, uh, he said the cost uh, is worth it. Uh, if there's a pearl uh, that's buried in the field, uh, I got to be willing to pay the price uh, for the great pearl. So what price tag will you put on revival unprecedented? Woo! Hallelujah. I say this. 
It was a friend of mine. He's going on to be with the Lord now. His church was in a very precarious situation. Financially, people in the church were in a very precarious situation. Brother Carney told me himself, he said, Brother Lambert, I had gone on a hunting trip. He said, I fell out of the stand and broke both of his arms just above his elbows. He said, I couldn't dress myself. I couldn't feed myself. He said, but there was a prayer meeting that was going on just before they were fixing to do surgery. And he said they started praying in that prayer room. <laughs> and God healed him. Both of his arms were broken. And God healed him. They walked out in the sanctuary worshiping. There was a spirit of sacrifice that sat down on that place. People started bringing boat, the, the titles to boats and all kind of thing, property and stuff, laying it on the altar. There was a young lady I remember. I remember her very well because she had just bought a brand new Jaguar. The Lord said, what's your sacrifice going to look like? She picked up the keys of that brand new car. She walked up to the altar and she laid it on the altar, Sister Hilda. And when the keys touched that altar, her brother that they had been praying for that was lost was sitting on the other side of the house. And when she laid that on the altar, that boy jumped up and ran to the altar. God forgave him of his sins. God refilled him with the Holy Ghost. Revival broke out and miracles started taking place. May I tell you, sometimes we set limits on God. Uh, sometimes we set limits uh, on revival. Uh, but I just asked the church tonight, uh, what does our sacrifice look like? Uh, are we willing to give all for the sake uh, of the kingdom? Are we willing to give all for the sake of the soul? Uh, are we willing to give all for the sake of the lost family member? Are we willing to give all tonight uh, for the sake of what God said? Step in. Somebody look at your neighbor and tell me, I feel a very uncomfortable spirit in this house right now. You thought I was going to take up an offer tonight. The devil is a lie. What we have to do is look. Say, God, if it's required, have I put limitations? How important Man, I feel it strongly again. How important is your stuff? I'll tell you right now, it ain't too long in the future either. The whole kit and caboodle is going to burn with a fervent fire according to the Word of God. And every bit of that stuff is going to be consumed. But the only thing that's going to step into eternity is souls. And I'll ask you in eternity, what does your sacrifice look like then? Uh, with the limitations that you put on, uh, your stuff have limited uh, the reach of a soul, uh, the effectiveness of the kingdom, uh, God doing what he needs to do. I ask us tonight, uh, we need to do a soul searching and say, God, uh, have we put limitations on? your hands in the presence of the Lord. It's happening in this room right now. No, 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 such your heart, God. If there is highlighted God, I Highlighted God.
It's all right. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I'll be very frank with you tonight. The limitations of sacrifice can limit restoration. Do you hear me? This church has stepped into 30 days of intense fervent prayer. The Lord said specifically the doors of the prophetic, the doors of the miraculous, the doors of deliverance, the doors of revival are being open. The Lord said, when I open it, no man can shut it. God said, I will open doors that no man can open and no man can shut. I just wonder tonight who wants to walk through those kind of doors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Because some are concerned I haven't read a text yet. Acts the 10th chapter and verse number 9. You don't have to stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Just turn to it in your Bible. Acts the 10th chapter verse number 9. If you have it, say praise the Lord. You feel the presence of the Lord in this place right now, do you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, God. Acts the 10th chapter and verse number 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up upon the housetop. To pray about the sixth hour. He became very hungry. Sounds like an apostolic guy, don't it? Would have eaten, but while they made ready. Somebody say he's hungry. Somebody say it again. He's hungry. Fell into a trance, saw heaven open. A certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at four corners. Let down to the earth. Simon went to the rooftop. Hungry. Simon got into position because he was hungry. He didn't stay down low. He ascended high because he was hungry. It's interesting that the Lord noted that hungry people have the potential for an angelic visitation. Well, I got to come on and preach it just in about the same time. Hungry people have the potential of stepping into divine moments just like Tonight, hungry people have the opportunity of seeing visitations, the move of God's Spirit. So tonight I simply ask, is there anybody hungry for an angelic visitation?
Is there anybody hungry for a divine moment in the presence of the Lord? Is there anybody hungry for a soul after soul and service after service? Is there anybody hungry for apostolic authority being restored? Visitation don't happen to those that are not hungry. I told you that this morning. The Lord just wondering tonight, how hungry are you? Are you hungry to climb enough to climb a little higher? Are you hungry enough to reach until God begins to speak? Are you hungry tonight for souls? Are you hungry tonight for a move the Holy Ghost unprecedented? I'm sorry. This is not your fashion of preaching, and this is not the way you normally see Brother Lambert preach, but I'm just going to operate what he said do. So I ask you tonight, how hungry are you? For your Bible said, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. How hungry are you? Unprecedented move of the Spirit of God. He said, he said, how hungry are you hungry enough to let limitations go are you hungry enough to move little things out of the way your bible said lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset there's some things that need to be laid aside that are simply resistance. Lord, the move of the Holy Ghost. Didn't say it was sin. It's just a wait. All things are possible. How hungry! God of exceedingly. God of abundantly. My neighbors, I'm hungry for my city, God. of restoration. The place of revival. When you God. draw near to us, uh -huh. you draw near Let to it. us, God. strongholds breaking, destiny shaking. you draw near to us, you draw near to us, darkness trembles. It's appropriate. Pray for somebody close to you right now. You draw near to us. You draw near to us. Strongholds breaking. Destiny's changing. You draw near to us. You draw near to us. Oh, Lord, you draw near. More than we ask or think. 
darkness trembles, mountains crumble. When you draw near to us, you draw near to us. Strongholds breaking, destinies changing. When you draw near to us, you draw near. Angels are at every corner when you fill the room. God fill the room. Everything that's dead comes to life when you fill the room. God fill the room. Oh, chains will break and deep. Will run when you feel the room. God feel the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. Darkness trembles. Mountains crumble when you draw near to us. You draw near to us. Strongholds breaking, destinies changing. When you draw near to us, you draw near to us. While Simon was hungry, dreams, visions started transpiring. It wasn't pizza dreams, it wasn't pizza visions. It was soul dreams. God, show me. He tell you, when God begins to show you, souls will be involved. Well, he's hungry, Brother Scroggins. Wow, there's dreams and visions. A Cornelius revival was looking for Simon. Strange investments. Strange investments. When God shows up revival and it don't look like you think it ought to, it won't matter. Prophetically telling you tonight in the Holy Ghost, there's a Cornelius revival that's knocking on the door of IFUPC tonight. But 
It's waiting on a Cornelius to say, God, I'm willing to remove the limits. If it doesn't fit my agenda, if it doesn't fit my criteria, if it didn't look like I think it ought to, if it didn't come like I think it ought to, God. There's a Cornelius revival that's knocking on the door. Are you hungry enough to open the door? And get past your not so Lord. Lift your hands right where you're at. Tell God, I want to remove the limits that would restrict anything that you want to do. Nearer, blessed to the cross where thou hast appropriate prayer for your neighbor right now in Jesus name come on pray for him hallelujah hallelujah thank you thank you thank you for your help God I want to remove the limits
to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding I feel the need to pray for Sister Alyssa right now. Would you lift your hands and lift your voice and pray? take about 30 seconds and thank him tonight for the moving of the Holy Ghost in this house. Proud of Meredith. Princess got baptized tonight in Jesus' name. I call her Princess about everywhere I see her. I saw her in the hall the other day. And I said, There's a princess right there. Look. <laughs> So glad to have her family with us tonight. The guests that are here I may have missed. Thank you for coming and being a part of service tonight. Now, from this point until the 19th is called the stretch. Amen. Those that have bolted out of the gate... Out of the chocks before, know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> that first lap's pretty easy. Second lap's not too bad. But when you get in the stretch, it takes about everything you've got. But you know what I know? The Lord would not have put us in the race. If he, if he didn't know we had the capabilities of finishing, amen. I'm just wondering tonight who's going to make it across the finish line. <laughs> yeah, the devil's going to have a bad day. I'm going to say that again. The devil's going to have a bad day. Hallelujah. Thank each of you for your sacrifice. Be in prayer in the coming days. Uh, we do have a lot that's going on and a lot that's going to go on. <clears throat> God's doing great things, and we are so thankful for the moving of His Spirit. Uh, be in prayer for myself and also the church board as we try to navigate these things that are going on. 
Uh, please remember also tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock will be our yearly church board, our church, excuse me, business meeting, and that's at seven here in the sanctuary. And we encourage all of you to be here. You say, "Well, I'm I'm not a member." We want you to know what's going on. That's what that's all about, Amen. And it'll be thorough enough. Sister Lambert always says, "Brother Lambert is over information." He's got so way beyond information, you'll walk out here going, oh my Lord, I've got information overload. But I just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page, and everybody knows what's going on, there's not any questions, and that way it doesn't give slime ball any room to try to create any problems, amen? And we don't have time for all that business anyway. God's doing too good of things in this house. Please remember, there will be prayer meeting just before a business meeting tomorrow night, and that will be here in the sanctuary at... 7 o'clock. We do have some new folks that's going to be added to the role that have uh, completed the process of that, and we're excited about that idea. Uh, We do have some things to discuss, some things that happened last year, and also the things that's coming up this coming year that you will want to know about and be a part of. Uh, Sister Lambert, am I missing anything? Sister Lambert, the Sister Lambert rapture took place. No, there she is. Amen. Uh, With that, nothing. Okay, guys. Marriage conference is coming up this coming Friday night and Saturday morning. Brother Blake and Sister Joy, I am missing you somewhere among the stuff. There he is, right there. Time frames for that to start, Brother Blake. Registration will open at 4 o'clock at Friday at Joe Wheeler State Park. And uh, for you who have registered, you're going to be there and be a part of that. Look forward to seeing you. Brother and Sister Robert are going to do a tremendous job. Uh, this coming week, and you be in prayer for them, uh, because I know the devil has painted a target uh, on them.